Hey, Final Tennis Nerds, I hope all is well. As you might have seen, I've been doing quite a few different pro stock racket videos where I and other people play test personal rackets of the top pros, Mari Djokovic, Andrew Agassi, and I have a few others in my collection as well, Tommy Haas, for example, that I might get to. It's not a collection as much as it is rackets that I enjoy and I'm not selling them, I'm keeping them, I'm playing with them from time to time. I'm not really a collector, I more like to just play tennis. I touched briefly in each video on how the racket suits that player, but I wanted to kind of compare it a bit more in this video, uh, starting with Novak. As you know, Novak is almost impossible to pass on the baseline. He hits the ball with amazing depth, great control, all-court tennis, counter punches. Very, very difficult to hit a winner against and, and break down. And the racket he uses is obviously very controlled at the 95 screen racket, 18-19 pattern. Just removing that cross string he did from his previous racket helped him to get a bit more spin on the ball and extending it ever so slightly like they did helped him get a bit more power as well because the swing weight is higher despite a, a slightly lower static weight. Overall, modern players, they're playing with much lighter frames than these pros that have been around for a long time. It depends a little bit on how you play. Novak needs the weight and the mass to kind of counter these heavy shots and it works for his style. But you couldn't really give this racket to Rafa Nadal because he's going to not be able to get enough forgiveness and topspin on, on the shots. When you're hitting with this massive topspin swing, you obviously need a little bit more real estate in the head because uh, you're hitting the ball a bit differently. And he's not going to get enough topspin with a 95 screen racket. So that makes a, a huge difference uh, in, in how they play. And that's why I suggested in a previous video it would be fun to see them play a tournament against each other where they have to trade rackets before the match starts. So we see Novak with the Aero Pro Drive and Nadal with this head pro stock 95 screen called PT346. Uh, so this works for Novak. All these rackets are personalized heavily for the pros. It can be from a commercial model. There are many pros that use the Wilson 6195 in some form, like Bautista Agut, Kyle Edmund, Dan Evans, Del Potro used to play with that, and many, many more. Uh, but then they have their own tweaks, whether it's a little bit extended, a little bit longer, or they add some weight somewhere. As you can see here, uh, in this case, Novak adds a bit of lead tape up at three and nine locations, increases the twist weight, so the racket is less prone to twisting, which can be clever when you have a smaller head size. It helps the racket remain stable and solid on impact. Not seeing many club players benefiting from anything like this. Uh, you need to be quite advanced, even though it might feel great at first, it might punish you in the end. But a great control counter-punching rackets, these types of players should generally look for something that gives them the precision to hit a passing shot or to move the ball around in the court like Novak does. He plays kind of tennis chess in a way. So this one works really well for him, but wouldn't work for Rafa Nadal or Roger Federer, and we'll get to why. Andy Murray is quite similar to Novak. Remember their matches when they had these huge marathon matches? Not the most exciting ones, in my opinion, because they are too similar in styles. They both play this kind of waiting game, trying to use their opponent's mistakes against them. And Mari therefore uses a very similar racket in many ways. They're both quite heavy. They're similar head size, 95 square inches. He is using a 16-19 pattern, which is a little bit more open than Novak's. And he's using a slightly more flexible frame. So the frame flexes more, has less inherent power. So he has a higher swing weight because the swing weight adds power. And this Racket hits pinpoint locations, which is what Murray needs. He plays a similar style to Novak, so this is more of a personal preference. I think these two guys could easily change rackets and they'll be fine after an adjustment period. I don't think that would be a huge deal, but Roger wouldn't want to play with this one. Or Carlos Alcaraz, for example. He would not like to play with this kind of log and that's super heavy, not very spinny compared to his frame. A very, very different proposition. I also talked about Andrew Agassi's frame. PT59, 107 square inch, slightly different mold than the original Radical Tour. I'm not exactly sure the story about that, behind that, but I, when I compare them, this mold is a bit different. Uh, so it's not a huge difference, but it, there are some differences. And he's using this oversized frame, which is quite rare for any ATP Pro. I don't even know if there's an ATP Pro using an oversized frame on the Tour today. I would guess not. 
And I'm pretty sure there's not even a one on the WTA tour, at least in the higher ranks. Because you don't get like a lot of control, but the older generation of oversized frames had a bit more control thanks to the thinner beams and more tight string patterns. So this is an 1819. He also dabbled with 2021, as you might know. So this one is rock solid. They're very solid because of the bigger head, leaves good stability, relatively heavy. The grip feels like it kind of suits more of an Eastern grip and that kind of flat take the ball early on the rise, use the mass of the frame. And when you're taking the ball early, some forgiveness can help because you might hit it a little bit off center, but the 107 square inch head size will take care of that. Although on this racket, it's uh, definitely less forgiving than any modern frame. It's not like aerodynamically designed. It doesn't feel very good if you hit outside the sweet spot. Sweet spot is smaller but it offers good precision for an oversized frame. So um, that's why Andrew uses this one. He used like to redirect pace, double-handed backhand. I, don't, I didn't feel good on the one-hander, neither did Boss, who also plays with the one-hander, while the double-handed backhand players that tried it really enjoyed it. So works for him, double-handed backhand, just go and hit hard from the back of the court. Big thanks to our sponsor, Fuzzy Yellow Balls. They have this great app teaching us how to use our kinetic chain. And that's something uh, that, you know, I struggle with. I think many club players struggle to make sure you utilize all the different parts of your body correctly to generate more pace and to have a more relaxed swing, whether it's on the serve or the backhand or the forehand. Serve module is free. You can check out one drill from that one, the twist rotation drill in the link in the description. So do that and uh, you can then unlock forehands and backhands as well. It's not an expensive app to subscribe to, so check it out in the App Store, Fussy Yellow Boss. We get to Roger. Roger uses the ProStaff RF97. This is in the Wilson Custom design made by my son, so he thought that the green and the silver with a leather grip that is underneath here would look cool, and it does, I think. So this is the RF97 autograph. Roger uses this. It's a little bit lighter in swing weight compared to the Murray and the Novak frames. Slightly bigger head, 97 square inches. Slightly firmer feel. It's quite a firm racket, meaning it's rather stiff, which is good for this kind of attacking player because you get the precision from the relatively tight string, but it's not a rough racket. But you also have the stiffness to give you a bit more power so you can actually finish the point within four or five shots. I mean, Roger's serve is very important weapon, and then he wants to hit maybe two, three shots more. He doesn't want to linger and play these endless rallies. So a firmer, still controlled, more of a precision racket like the pro staff is, is what works for players like Roger. And he did make the move from a 90 square inch racket, as you know, in 2013, 14. And it took time for him to adjust. Any kind of racket change for a pro will take a long time to adjust, but he ended with here. And then he won some more slams, partly thanks to the racket change. If he hadn't changed rackets, I think he would not won one more. I wouldn't have seen that coming because he, he would have required so much more from him. And with Rafa's topspin hitting on his backhand and other players figuring out that you have to attack that backhand, that would have been a problem. But with this frame, he started hitting his backhand much more aggressively. Yes! And it worked really well and led to three more slams. Rafa's original frame, it's not his personal frame. Uh, is this one, the Aero Pro Drive original, quite a firm racket, like it's quite stiff and raw in feel, no dampening materials in the handle or here. Works for his style, hits with huge top spin. He wants this wider and more aerodynamic racket design, obviously, to help him if he hits higher up in the string bit, which you usually do when you hit with these more top spin oriented strokes. Uh, you're going to have the sweet spot traveling higher up than, for example, Mari and Djokovic that hit a more flat trajectory through the court same with fed for example so more up here and has a bit more forgiveness in the string bed and the string movement will be quite powerful with this one the strings will move and snap back and the way he hits with such velocity and such a vertical move it will definitely increase the strain on the strings and that's why he's using thicker strings he's using rpm blast 1.35 he's been trying 1.30 for more power at times and then back to 135 not exactly sure where he stands today on the string gauge but it's a pretty controlled and durable string setup otherwise he would break strings very frequently so this is a rafa racket would love to see what novak did with this frame i think he would lack a lot of control and i don't think he would be super happy uh, with this one i mean murray tried going up in head size 
but a racket that was still similar to his and that did not really suit him, he thought. Might have led to better results in the long run, but you know, you, you don't want to keep playing and don't feel confident when you're playing like Murray. So I can understand why he went back. The racket of Carlos Alcaraz, not with the RPM blast that he uses at 55 and 51 pounds, but the same model, he's actually using it stock from what I've heard. Uh, I know there probably are um, loads of people who says, no, no, there's no chance. But from people who know Carlos, that is what I heard. I can't confirm this is not his personal frame. But it makes some sense considering how much whip he puts on the ball. And when you're seeing a lot of guys now coming up 19, 20 years old, their frames are not that heavy. Uh, they are swinging very fast, moving really well, sliding on hard courts and all that. It's a change of tennis. Their tennis is evolving. So they're not using these uh, monster heavy frames like Mario and, and uh, Novak, for example, because they have a different styles. Alcaraz is more of a feather player. And he uses lots of spin and massive racket head speed and always attacks, attack, attack. He has these moments where he both seem to sail out very easily, but then he kind of connects again and, and he's just unstoppable. So this racket works for him. It gives him good control, but also some extra power because the stiffness is a bit higher. And I think Carlos and Feder could maybe try each other's racket because they have similar styles, I would say. Obviously, the feeling is very different because this is a more of an aerodynamic beam, but the stiffness of these frames are quite close, so that wouldn't be an issue. Uh, Federer might want to add a lot of weight to this to get it up to what he's used to, because otherwise it feels too light. But for Carlos, I don't think he's adding a bunch of weight. Even if he adds some, I, I don't see him adding a, a loads, of, loads of weight. It doesn't really suit his extremely whippy fast swing. And... A few bonus frames. Andrei Kuznetsov used to be top 40 in the world. Have one of his personal frame. This is actually a Blade 98S, which is an 1816 pattern, as it says on the frame. So it's a standard blade. I don't know exactly which generation this is. It's painted to look like version 7, but it's, it's not. You can tell from the feel, it's a bit firmer. But he actually has 1817 string pattern, like Grigor Dimitrov. So there's an extra cross string for more control. Companies can definitely do this for pros that want a bit more control or a bit bit of a different output from the racket. So I think this is interesting when you get these frames. Quite spinny frame still uh, with the 1817 pattern. Swing weight in the 350s, so heavy, uh, but nice to play with. Uh, I, I actually had fun playing with this one, but, but quite uh, a demanding frame for uh, anyone on my level, really. But you can see this over and over again that you have a change in string pattern something that the player wants to try and he definitely felt like this racket was good but he wanted more weight which is added obviously and a slightly different string pattern and not to forget the wta tour uh, they use more towards stock weight frames meaning these types of power frames you're going to see a lot of pure drives a lot of yonix e zones or v cores and there's not a bunch of weight added some might add a little bit of, of lead tape to some but these are generally much lighter frames uh, easier to swing. The Iga Svantec, for example, is a 299 swing weight, adding 30 points. It's 330. It's even something that that some advanced club level players can use because it's not too demanding. Uh, this one belonged to Julia Gurges. She retired some time back. The date from this frame was 2016 in March, and uh, this is a good frame. It's very similar in swing weight to Iga's. Uh, pure drive based on the 2012 version. Uh, but painted to look like the 2015 version, as you know, these cosmetics. It's not her original string. I'm not exactly sure what she used, uh, but I strung it with Toraline Caviar, which is what I like. Some silicone in the handle, leather grip, which I haven't seen much of on the WTA Tour, but a typical power frame uh, that you see over and over again. On the WTA Tour, you're seeing more frames that could be fine to use on the club level. Generally something I'd recommend even, you know, to use an ESO 100 or or a pure drive or something that's easier to use. I know many players suffer from elbow issues, so uh, that's why I tend to recommend clashes and phantoms and, and rackets are a bit more friendly to your elbow. But overall, this is a typical frame that gives you a bit of extra power and help, which most of us need, uh, even though we try to persist with more control frames, maybe because we like it, maybe because it just feels better, maybe we have it in our head that this is what we want to use, which is completely fine. Everything is a personal choice and up to you. 
but overall there's a reason that these frames are more prevalent on the WTA Tour because they need a bit more help to generate power than on the men's tour. So that's about some pro play frames and the needs and why they chose this frame. It shows how personal rackets are. If I had 50 more pro stock frames here, I would give you some lowdowns on that, but usually it comes from personal preference. Like I want to add some more swing weight to this. They want a whippier feel. Some use relatively light frames, Taylor Fritz, uh, Carlos Alcaraz, really whippy swings. Even Jack Sox frame is not super heavy. Nick Kyrgios is not using an ultra heavy frame with a high swing weight. S extremely fast swings. They can't really play with Novak's racket and utilize that fast swing. It's not possible physically. It's not going to give them that kind of ball that they can hit. So very personal, needs to suit your style, needs to suit your level of play. That's why it's so important to pick the right equipment. Doesn't mean you have to go on a crazy journey and try 100 frames. But it's good to have an idea of what can work for you and why it can work for you. And when you've found something you like, stick with that. And if you'd like to try rackets like I do, do that too. That's fine. Everything is fine as long as you're happy doing it. That's it for now. Have a nice day now and don't forget to play some tennis.